Now the first experiment we're going to look at today is called, Can You Sink an Orange? Now the materials I need to do this experiment are just a glass bowl or a vase such as this one and an orange that is completely intact with the skin on as well as an orange that's been peeled completely. Now if I take the whole orange and place it into the vase or jar, I can see that it floats and that will continue to float and I can't sink this orange. Now if I take the other orange that's had the peel removed completely and place that in my container, I can see that that sinks to the bottom. Now the reason for this is because the orange with the peel on is actually full of trapped air pockets that are in the skin itself and that makes the orange very light for its size. Whereas the orange that's been peeled doesn't have the air pockets to keep it afloat and this orange is actually very heavy for its size. Now another concept that's very important for children to understand is the idea of fair testing when conducting any scientific experiment. I'm just going to demonstrate this idea with these two balls. Now to make this a fair test, I'm going to drop the two balls from the same height at the same time onto the same surface. So all of those things I'm keeping the same to make this a fair test. I have one thing that's different and that is the type of ball. I have two different balls here and that is called the variable. Okay, so in a scientific experiment we have a variable and everything else must stay the same. So I can drop them together at the same time and I can see that they land at the same time. Now if I dropped one from a higher distance than the other, that wouldn't be a fair test. So that's another concept that you must keep in mind and children must keep in mind when conducting any scientific experiments. The next experiment we're looking at now is called speedboat matchsticks. The materials I need for this experiment are a glass jar filled with water, a few matchsticks and some liquid detergent. So I need to take a few of these matchsticks and pop them into my bowl of water, take a little bit of the liquid detergent and squirt it in, into the water like this and just drop in a few drops of liquid detergent. This experiment works because the detergent gives off an oily film that breaks down the surface tension of the water and pushes the matches away. This next experiment is called a pressure experiment. Now the materials I need for this experiment are a glass bowl full of water, a glass or a jar and a crumpled up piece of paper. Now I need to push my crumpled piece of paper into the jar or glass. And make sure it's secure and firmly placed at the bottom of the glass and simply turn the glass upside down and plunge it into the bowl of water. Now air has been trapped inside my glass so that when I pull it out and take out a piece of paper, I can see that it's still completely dry. Now what has happened here is that the air inside the glass takes up space and pushes. The paper stays dry because the water can only get into the glass by squashing the air inside it. Air can be squashed or compressed a little, but then it pushes back and prevents the water from reaching the paper. This is a pressure experiment and it's called killer straw. To conduct this experiment, I simply need a potato that's been peeled and a straw. Now I'm going to try and penetrate the potato with the straw just by poking it in like this. It's quite difficult to penetrate the surface of the potato. Now if I cover the opening of the straw at one end with my thumb and then try, I can see that the straws penetrated quite a way into the potato, up to about that much. 
The reason for this is that the air that's been trapped inside the straw gives the straw enough strength to penetrate the potato.